Carbondale, welcome to Baha'i Focus. Baha'i Focus is a local production of the Carbondale Baha'i community. It's shown here on Channel 7, Carbondale Cablevision. Our guest today is Avery Krim. Everybody fondly calls her Mama. Thank you for coming on Baha'i Focus. Thank you. Avery is a Baha'i. Yes. And how long have you, how many years have you been a Baha'i? I've been a Baha'i about 10 years. 10 now. years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What is it about the Baha'i faith that, uh, that you wanted to, to investigate it? Well, what I reason I became a Baha'i is that I sat down and I read The uh, Thief in the Night. I started in the middle of the book. Uh -huh. It was on a Sunday morning. And it got so good to me. I got to understanding so much about the thing that I didn't know that I have to begin in the, the beginning of the book, The Thief in the Night. That's uh -huh. the one that I like to do. That's the book, Thief in the Night by William Sears. That's right. Uh -huh. That's right. And after I read The Thief in the Night, I believe. Mm -hmm. I believe in the Baha'i faith. Thief of the Night is a book about Christian prophecy. Right, right, right. And Baha'u'llah fulfills the Christian prophecy. That's right, that's right. <clears throat> what was your background before you were Baha'i? I was a Baptist. Mm -hmm. And I was baptized in the Baptist church. And before then, I was a Presbyterian. My husband was a Presbyterian. Uh -huh. And so when I moved to Joppa, we didn't have a, Baptist, a Presbyterian church there. So we became Baptist, free will Baptist there in Joppa. Mm -hmm. And so, well, one thing I didn't like about the Baptist church is when they took sacrament, it was just only the Baptist that they gave it to. And I didn't like that because all Christians should be able to take part of Christ's body, not uh -huh. just the Baptist, all right. of them. So I never did like that. Mm -hmm. Was it much of a transition, do you think, from Baptist to Baha'i? No, I don't think it was. It was just that I just believed there would be another one come, and Baha'u'llah was him, and mm -hmm. so it wasn't no transition at all. It was just a case of moving up. Okay. What, what was the reaction of your friends? Well, they reacted a little strangely towards me. They, one of them met me in the street one day, so they tell me that you have left the church. I said, yes, I've left the Baptist church, but I haven't left God. I said, I'll serve God just like you do. It's the uh -huh. same God that you serve. I'm serving him. I said, I haven't left him. <clears throat> but I haven't had any other problems. Uh -huh. I think, let's go back a little bit. Your story starts really quite a bit before you started reading the book, Thief from the Night. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Who, were, who was the first people behind your family? I believe that was Dempsey, my oldest son. Uh -huh. uh, he was going to school at Southern then, and so he was, um, he was what you call an elder in the church, in the Baptist church. Oh, he was. I didn't know yes, that. Yes, he was. Yeah. Yes, he was. And so he was going to school at Southern, and he would come home on the weekends, and I would try to get him to go to church, and he wouldn't. Uh -huh. And so he told me about this, about the Baha'i faith. And I said, you disrespect us to Christ. And he said, no, I'm not, Mama. I said, yes, you are. I didn't understand. I mm -hmm. just didn't understand. And that's what it is, this ignorance of not knowing what's going on. And so he didn't pressure me to become a Baha'i. He didn't pressure me no way at all. He just said that he wasn't going back to church with him because he found something better. Uh -huh. And so that's when he left that book there. He didn't leave it there for me. I said, Mama, here's the book. He didn't do that. The book was just happened to be laying there. Uh -huh. I think then your uh, your daughter Fern decided to go and uh, bring Dempsey back into the fold a little, little right, bit. And right, what, right. What happened with Fern? Well, four was always she become a Baha'i. Uh -huh. She was in the Baptist church too. Fern was going to school to Southern too. Uh -huh. And uh, when after she found out and read about it, well, she become a Baha'i too. Seems to be a chain reaction going on here. Yes. Uh, who, who was next in line? Let's see. I think that was my third son, Al. Uh-huh. He became the high. He said, if it's good enough for Mama, it's good enough for me. Mm -hmm. And so he becomes the high. And he was married and going to school down at, uh, at uh, in Missouri. Mm -hmm. And so his wife would come up behind too after he became a high. It seems to be a... A bit of a, it's almost an epidemic, it seems yeah. like. A in my family. <laughs> in, in your family. Who was the next after Al then? 
Well, that was, I think that was Tommy to me. He mm -hmm. was truly Berea. And he accepted it. And there's a group of Baha'is down in Berea. Uh -huh. And then after that was Cindy. And she was going in the Navy. And so she become a Baha'i. Mm -hmm. And she took that prayer in the Baha'i book down there with her. And she couldn't swim. And she said one of those prayers out of the Baha'i book. And she, she swam like a fish. And so she passed her test. Oh, too. really? Yes, sir. So you're saying there's, there's almost miraculous powers that go with That's this right. thing? Right, right, right. Just where in this line of people did uh, did you become a Baha'i? Uh, where, where did you fit in there? Were you in the middle or at the I end? Was, or? I was a third one third after one? Dempsey, and then Fern, and then me. Oh, you were actually before Fern then? Yeah, no, Fern was a Baha'i before I was. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I can remember Fern telling stories that, uh, that you were kind of a, a, a Against the faith at yes, the beginning? That yes, the yes. Me and Dempsey had a lot of arguments because he was, you know, he was a traitor to Christ. Everybody knows that uh -huh. because he wouldn't go to church. And, and uh, not going to church was, I didn't know that uh, the Baptist was something and Christianity was something else. I realize now Christianity, to, to love Christ, you are Christian first and then a Baptist. I always thought it was just the Baptist mm -hmm. or the Presbyterian. And I didn't know what Christianity fit in there. I just didn't know. Mm -hmm. But I realize now that everybody is a Christian, Christianity and Christ. And the Baptist and Presbyterian, Catholic, all those are secondary to being a Christian. What are some of the Baha'i teachings that, that really appealed to you? Well, well, I'll tell you, yeah, uh, one thing I really liked was that men and women are equal. It's just like a bird, that it takes two wings to fly, a bird to fly, level, and that's the Baha'i faith, believe man and woman, God created those men and women equal. Well, right. And it, before then, no. Yeah. The man was superior to the woman. And since then, I found out, no, God created them equal. Right. That's the idea that the that men and women are like two wings of a right, bird. Right. Unless that they are they are equally developed that the bird cannot really fly. fly like it this should. really carries on to other areas of life, right. but uh, that's that's a really common Baha'i concept. And that uh, the white and the black it's no different. They're just people. Right. God created them. Right. And so one is no better than the other. You take the brain of a white person, lay it out and a black one lay it out and Tell somebody to come in and pick them out, you couldn't do it to save your life. Right. So they're equal. They're just people. Right. They all have the same aspirations of wanting things for their families and their children. Both of them do. I think it really just goes way beyond being equal. It's, it's something that I've found that as a Baha'i, that you get the races coming together and it adds so much more to yeah, life. Yes, it's just it so does. much more beautiful that, that uh, the Baha'i writings talk about the races of people as many different colored flowers in the garden. That's right, that's right. It's only when the different colors all come together, yeah, their, their diversity and their textures mm -hmm. and their colors and their fragrances, and that the, that the garden really becomes more it's beautiful. beautiful. It's beautiful. This is probably the, the only organization that I've ever seen that has successfully really mm -hmm. united the, the, the races yeah. together. And it's not just black and white, it's all races. Right, that's right. We come together, <coughs> all of us do. That's why I mentioned at the opening of the, of the program that uh, everybody really just kind of calls you mama, and yeah. that's, that's really true. You're kind of yeah. the, you're the mama of all the Baha'is of Southern Illinois. Southern Illinois. Everybody in Southern Illinois, all the Baha'is love this lady, mm -hmm. so you're looking at somebody really special here. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Is there anything, uh, any other teachings that you'd like to comment mm -hmm. on that you like? Well, to tell you the truth, I like them all. I like them all. <laughs> Since I've become a Baha'i, I've understood more about the Bible, about the Quran, and about our Kitabi Adas, the Kitabi I can, our mm -hmm. holy book. They're all the same. It's just becoming a different period of time. It's just that Baha'u'llah come from this day and age, where Muhammad was a thousand <laughs> years ago and Christ was two thousand years ago. They're all one and the same, only just now. And when you a Christian and haven't moved up to be 
Uh, well, you say a monster. Uh -huh. You missed out there, and if you miss out there and miss out on the high faith, you are really missing out on a lot. Mm -hmm. And the Quran is a beautiful book. It really is. It tells you more about Christ than the Bible does. Mm -hmm. If you want to know about Christ, you should read the Quran. Well, who is Baha'u'llah? The, the founder of the Baha'i faith is named Baha'u'llah. Who, who do you think he is? Who do I think he is? Mm -hmm. He's the messenger from God. Just like Christ, and just like Muhammad, just like Moses, and all the rest of the prophets. Mm -hmm. That's who he is. Yeah. Is there any difference between these, these messengers? No, no difference whatsoever. Only they came at a different time, mm -hmm. a different period in history. So they really, they come from the same source. Same source, all bring the same, the same message. They're all one and the same in the sight of God. It's just man that makes the difference. When did Baha'u'llah live? It was back in 1844 when he declared his mission. Mm -hmm. It's right around that area, yeah. He uh, lived about 100 years uh -huh. ago. Mm -hmm. So uh, you, you sincerely believe that a prophet of God came 100 years ago? Sure. How can we think it? I don't believe that. I believe in Christ. I believe he came. Mm -hmm. I believe in Muhammad came. I believe Moses came. How can we think God came to nothing if he wants to? Makes sense to me. In a thousand years from now, to be another one. You said that you were reading the book Thief of the Night, um, where it talks about some of the Christian prophecies. Uh, do you have anything you could uh, share with us with that? Well, they said he would come from the way of the east, and he did. Mm -hmm. Persia is east, east from, east from the Holy Land even. Yeah. And he said that, uh, well, now I don't know so much about that coming down in the clouds. I don't know so uh -huh. much about that. I never could figure that one out because it said clouds is gas that rises from the earth. Mm -hmm. That's right. Well, that's what I think every, every time a prophet comes, they expect miraculous things to happen uh -huh. when he appears. And uh, for the most part, they always come as normal people. And yeah, they do. It's their message that is, that is unique and is special. You, you took a trip recently. Yes, uh, yes. My son, my oldest son, took me to on a pilgrimage to the Holy Land. To, is Israel. to Israel. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. Well, that was the first time I'd ever rode an airplane. Oh, yeah? And I thoroughly enjoyed it. But to get to the Holy Land and to be over there where Baha'u'llah walked and where the Bible was there, it's been another world. It's so beautiful. It's just, it's just breathtaking. It's paradise right here on Earth, right mm -hmm. there. And I wish and I recommend that trip to everybody that's Baha'i because you would understand what it's like to be in heaven because it's the same as being in heaven there. Mm -hmm. Fly the rose garden, the flower garden, the trees, the landscape and everything was just immaculate. It's just beautiful. I was talking with the Jewish rabbi in Carbondale recently and He's been to Israel twice and the last time there he visited the Baha'i World Center he did. in Haifa, he did. Israel. Mm -hmm. And uh, he remarked that it is one of the most beautiful places it's in Israel. It's one of the most beautiful places on the earth. That's probably true. <clears throat> Israel, for the most part, is fairly barren. It's, it's a it's hill. It's a mountain. That's Mount, where the gardens is, on the mountain. Mount Carmel. Mount Carmel. Yeah. In the Bible, it says that the glory of God will come to Mount Carmel. And he is. Yeah. And you, uh, we had a room in the Hotel Noor. And it looked down over the bay, and it looked down on this here garden, this garden, the high faith garden, you know, and you could see the temple, the top of the temple of the Bob, where the Bob is buried at, it's shown in gold, this gold uh, dome. Mm -hmm. And at night it lit it up, it lit up, and it was bright, and it's breathtaking. Mm -hmm. It's just simply breathtaking. What do you do on pilgrimage? What is. Uh we visit the shrine of the Bob, we visit the shrine of Baha'u'llah, we go in, and when you go into one of those shrines, you go in there. You just go in there and you say, well, I'm, I'm going in here and see what this is like. And before you leave in there, you say in a prayer, and tears just rolling down your cheeks. You don't know what has come over you. You got a feeling that's come over you that you can't get no place else in the world, mm -hmm. like you can in the tomb of the Bob and Baha'u'llah. And I said to my son, Denzel, I said, Denzel, I didn't get that feeling when I went in Abdu'l-Baha's tomb. 
He said, Mama, you weren't supposed to get it. So he's not who Baha, but the bottom Bahala is. I said, I felt guilty because I didn't have that feeling. But I had a feeling that it just simply just, it just makes you feel so good. And every time I think about it, I have that same feeling. Mm -hmm. that same feeling come over. So some of the people I talk to who, who have been there say that it's almost like like com coming home, like being home for the first time. I don't know if this thing something washes over you and just you just you don't have a care in the world. It's nobody that's in that room and it's fifteen or twenty people in that room, but it's nobody there but you. Mm -hmm. You don't have no fear of nobody else. Mm -hmm. It's just like God's talking to you and nobody else. It's something. Really powerful. also unique that when you go there, you are also among the Baha'is from all corners all of the world. All corners of the world. The Baha'is from all over the world come there. New Zealand, Brazil, California. If people, I didn't know anybody there but my son. But you would thought we was one big family. Mm -hmm. Everybody looked after everybody else and everybody was happy. You didn't see no frowns. You seen smiles. You see tears when you see them come out of that the Bob uh, tomb or the Bahala tomb. They were crying because they were happy. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been? I've never been there. No. Man, you gotta go. <laughs> that's that's. I'll that's, go. You got to go. Mm -hmm. And then when you go, you'll understand what I'm saying. You'll understand them more so than you do now if you ever go, because by, uh, Bonnie and Junior went. Mm -hmm. They said, Mama, y'all got to go. Oh, we'll go sometime. And so then she said, Mama, we'll go this year. Of course, that's been about two years ago. And so um, <coughs> we went, and we said, we thanked them when we come back. And so now we're telling our other children, Tommy, he's got a job now. He said, that's first on my agenda, to make that pivotal. Mm -hmm. And I want them all to go because and then they'll understand what I'm talking about. Until you do, you don't understand. You think you do, but you don't understand. Were you there when they had, uh, they must have been, still been working on the, the, the building for the House of Justice? Yes. They had finished it, but they didn't have it, the furniture and stuff on the inside of it. Right. But they had finished it. We got to go in and look around but they didn't have the rugs and the lamps and the tables being like they have now. This was the, it's the administrative, World Administrative Center of the Baha'i Faith. This is really the, going to be the focus for Baha'u'llah's government. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. I didn't get to go down in the basement. They got a place down there for parking your cars. Uh -huh. I didn't get to go down in there. I got sick uh, uh, by four days on the pilgrimage. I got sick with the flu. Uh -huh. But then she got to go down in there, and they got uh, computers, and they got places to park your car. Uh, they said that building cost $20 million to build, mm -hmm. and it is beautiful. It is beautiful. Did you go into the archives yes, building? Yes, I did. Well, what yes, did you see I there did. that you liked? Well, I seen the picture of the whole lot in there. I seen his photograph. That's one of the unique things about the uh -huh. Baha'i Faith. Mm -hmm. For the first time, we know what the Prophet looked like. Yes, 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 yes. Mm -hmm. We've seen his clothes. We've seen his shoes. We've seen his room where he stayed at. Mm -hmm. But in this archive, it's, it's uh, uh, mm -hmm. clippings of his hair and the clothes he wore and the shoes he wore and a picture of him and a picture of the Bob. Mm -hmm. It's just... And the, the actual writing? Yes, the, yes, the actual writing. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I think in a lot of ways that I was I would really like to see that. Yes, you would really enjoy it too. Mm -hmm. And we went to uh, where is the house of, of uh, where is his house set there right close to his tomb. house of the boobs? That's right. We went up to his bedroom, mm -hmm. and there on his bed is his hat sitting on his bed that he slept in. That's Baji. Uh huh. Is it Baji? Uh huh. And they had rose petals all the way around that hat. Mm -hmm. You didn't pick those rose petals. You left those rose petals. Uh -huh. And he had a pair of shoes sitting there under his bed. And I wanted to bend down and kiss them shoes, but I said, <laughs> no, I won't bother. But they showed 
where, you know, how his leg was swelled up there, one of his legs was swelled up. Yeah. And the shoes just showed that. And they was just right there for you to see, for, for you to touch. Right. A prophet of God's shoes that you could touch. Mm -hmm. Just think about that. This is not something that you, <clears throat> that you can't touch. It's something that you can touch and that you can feel. And you know it's real. Mm -hmm. You know he's real. Something that I don't know how much people realize, but the intense suffering that Baha'u'llah had to endure the, when he was in prison, when he was exiled, the, the suffering of his family, the suffering of his friends. Uh, in many cases, he saw his friends die right before his eyes. He saw his children die. Uh, his own personal suffering is just something incredible. And you know, he was a rich man. Originally, he was, yeah. Yeah. And they took all of that away from him. Right. They took all that away from him, and they would give it, was going to give him a big job in the government, and he said, no, no, he didn't want that. Right. And so he, they took him, you know, just like, for instance, you was rich, and they take everything away from you. So I'll give this back to you if you would deny God. He said, no, you got it. He's going by his business. He went to supper. They done everything to him. <coughs> He wasn't used to the hard life when they put him in that prison. Yeah. He wasn't used to that. There's a passage in the Bible, in the 53rd chapter of Isaiah, that talks about a suffering Messiah. It says, by his stripes we are healed. Right. And it says that he was put into prison, he was shut away from the world. And a lot of people think that this refers to Jesus, but if you read the rest of the passage, it says that it pleased God to bruise him, it, pr it pleased him to to test him. He wanted to test him to make sure that he would uh, have the qualities that, and the capabilities for uh, the great mission that he had in the future. And then Isaiah goes on to say that God would not allow him to die. That uh, it says God would greatly extend his years and that yes, he would, right. that he would right. live to see his, his children. His children. And this right there I think shows that the, this passage does not refer to Jesus, but uh, right. to Baha'u'llah, because Baha'u'llah was in prison. He suffered intensely. He lived to be 75 years old. And, and he did have children. He had many children. Mm -hmm. And uh, it also says, in reference to the same context, that uh, that uh, this prophet that Isaiah foretold would come from the east. He would come to Mount Carmel, right where the Baha'i World mm -hmm. Center is. He would come to, to Acre, which today mm -hmm. is known as Akka. Mm -hmm right next to, at the foot of Mount Carmel. It says that uh, he would come at a time when the Jews returned to Israel from all the corners of the earth. And which they have. And it's happened. It's happened. The Jews have returned. Mm -hmm. Baha'u'llah has come, and, uh, and they put him in prison. Mm -hmm. And this state of Israel, they made a, I think, I don't know whether it was Abdu Baha or Baha'u'llah, made a pact with the Israelites. Israel's there that they wouldn't teach the people right. the Baha'i faith, but they protect the Baha'i faith, right. the Israelites. The uh, government of Israel asked the Baha'is not to teach within Israel, mm -hmm. because really there are so many, there are so few people there that uh, they didn't want all of Israel to become Baha'is, so the Baha'is agreed not to teach in Israel, um, and uh, so they don't. For, for someone to become a Baha'i in Israel, they have to actually physically leave the country, right, become right. a Baha'i, and then come back. Right, right. And you'd be walking down the street there. They say, "Oh, you're Baha'i. You're Baha'i. You, you're a Baha'i." And so they know that they can tell the Baha'is to come there. They've come there on pilgrimage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it, and we, while we were there mm -hmm. at the center, the Baha'i center, we they would bring tours in there. They bring people in there. They would tour those gardens. They would have weddings in that garden. Uh -huh. It was just that beautiful. But the people there that wasn't the Baha'i didn't get the feeling when they went in those those uh, tombs that you get when you went in Baha'u'llah's tomb and you went in the Bob's tomb. They didn't get that. A lot of people there. when they go in there think it's just a church or it's just well, a it's building. Well, it's not. It's 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 the closest thing to God that you can get. It's right there. Mm -hmm. And when you lay your head down there on that. It's a concrete slab. I don't know. It's a marble slab. Mm -hmm. That's right there in front of The threshold of, of the door right. that goes into the room. And you lay your head down there, your cares, everything just leaves you. Just, you're just a different person. You're just a different person. Mm -hmm. You don't know who you are. You just, it's, I just can't explain it to you. 
there's an Islamic saying that says, blessed is he who visits the visitor of Akka. And of course, Akka is where the Baha'i World Center is. And it's really, it is a blessing for us to visit with you about this, to, to talk about yeah. it. And, uh, Israel is a very special place, and Beautiful. Jerusalem is a very Beautiful. special place. Yes, it is. The Baha'is Haifa and Mount Carmel mm -hmm. is a very special place. Mm -hmm. Mount Carmel is, uh, as we've mentioned before, has been singled out in the Bible as the place where the glory of God will come. It's in Isaiah, it's in, uh, it's in Micah, it's in, uh, it's in several of the books that, that he will come to Mount Carmel. It brings, being a Baha'i has brought a peace of mind to me that I haven't had. I never had had it before, <laughs> but I have it now. It's just, it's just fantastic. That's all. Uh -huh. Fantastic. And, and I get a uh, little, uh, I don't know what you see. When I try to tell somebody about the Baha'i faith and they don't understand, uh, my son will say to me, he said, Mama, remember now, you know that me and you had a time before you could come up behind that. <laughs> be, you had to be careful about this. I said, people just don't understand. I just think everybody could see that. You know, the guy has sent another messenger. Uh -huh. But he said, Mama, said, now remember now, you didn't see it. It takes a special person to see this. You got to go in it with an open mind. And if those that don't see it, has got a veil before this is. It's a special thing that God allowed you to see it. Right. And you know I'm so happy that he did. A lot of times you have to realize that, that when someone someone becomes a Baha'i or someone decides to investigate the faith, that it's not you, but if, if they're not ready, as far as I'm concerned, it's because God doesn't want them That's to be right. ready yet, but That's there's something right. else for That's them to right. do. He said, it's something you've done in your life that, that made God let you become a Baha'i, that allowed you to become a Baha'i. So it's a special privilege to be a Baha'i. Mm -hmm. Not everybody is, you know, is, uh, could I say cut out for a Baha'i to be a Baha'i? Go ahead. <laughs> well, I don't think that. We're just saying we've got uh, probably several hundred people watching us right now. Anything you would, you would like to say to them? You've got a lot of friends in Carbondale. You've got a lot of friends in Southern Illinois. Well, that's what I want them to do is become Baha'i. And they have a peace of mind that they have never had before in their life. Mm -hmm. This is a lady here that, as she mentioned earlier, she, uh, she was a Baptist. And her children started becoming Baha'i. And it bothered her. It troubled her. And it angered her. She thought that they were turning away from the church. She thought that they were turning away from Jesus. But as she began to investigate it, she began to realize that not only were they not turning away from the church, but they were actually becoming a part of the regeneration of the church and the re regeneration right, of, right. of the rel religion. And uh, we would sincerely like to encourage people to investigate the Baha'i faith, to, to check it out, to read about it. Um, Baha'is don't force people to do anything. If you want to know about it, the information is there. The information is in the Carbondale Library. Um, there's a Baha'i phone number in the, in the phone book. If you want to call and talk about it, fine. Um, the doors are wide open, so by all means, don't shut yourself out. And we love Jesus. You've got to love Jesus before you can love Baha'u'llah. Several of the people, when I first became a Baha'i, that uh, helped bring me into the faith, I would say that five or six of them were former Jews. And one of them told me one day that to become a Baha'i, you first have to accept Jesus. Right, right. And he had trouble right, with that. He, right. He's been told his whole life that Jesus was not a prophet mm -hmm. because he was a Jew. And uh, he said, Baha'u'llah says that Jesus is the prophet. Okay, I'll accept it. And it says it wasn't until that he began to investigate this in Baha'i study classes that he really accepted Jesus. That's right, that's so, right. To become a Baha'i, you have to be love Jesus and all the prophets, Moses, Muhammad, all of them. We're just about out of time right now. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but we're talking right now with Avery Krim, affectionately known as Mama to everybody, and uh, 